We are Mike and Jeannie, and we restore old houses. In 2021, we moved to South Carolina and bought a 120-year-old Victorian house. Follow along as we put the polish back on this Victorian masterpiece. Welcome back to 1834 Restoration House. We hope you all had a great Christmas and a nice relaxing holiday with your families and friends. Well, welcome back to our Victorian house. This place has been around for a long time and we have some work to do today. First of all, the clothes dryer is taking 70 minutes to dry one single load of towels. A small load, no less. <laughs> right. These are laundromat grade machines and they shouldn't be doing that. No. So we'll show you how we troubleshoot that and hopefully when we're done, they'll work a lot better. What do you have going on today? I have bread to make. So I'll be making a basic white bread, single loaf with all purpose flour, nothing complicated. Is this something our viewers can do in their own kitchens? Yes, absolutely. There is no complicated equipment with this, just your arms nice. and a stove. Nice. <laughs> I should say an oven. Great, well, I'm looking forward to trying some of that. And finally, we're going to go in the wood shop and do some woodworking with you guys. Welcome back to 1834 Kitchen. We're gonna bake some bread today. And it's gonna be a basic, simple bread. It's just going to use the all-purpose flour. So it's not gonna be complicated and anybody can do this at home. We're gonna use the flour, the honey, some butter, active yeast, which we need to activate, and some salt. And then we have just a few kitchen utensils. Now the kitchen utensils are your basics. A tablespoon, a teaspoon, we have a butter knife, we have a little spatula, the two different kind of measuring cups, our bowl that we can, we're going to be buttering, and our water, which is between 100 and 110 degrees Fahrenheit. First thing I wanna do, this bowl is going to be used for proofing my bread. We're just gonna butter it all up. A very thin layer. Now you can use oil of any kind too if you like. I just like the butter flavor. Put it all the way up at the top. First thing I'm gonna use is the hot water. I wanna put three quarters of a cup I'm gonna put that in my mixing bowl. I'm gonna put about two tablespoons of butter. Yeah, my kitchen is still pretty cold. <laughs> so we're gonna break this up to hopefully get it to melt a little quicker. We're gonna put a teaspoon of salt in here. Just a scant teaspoon, not a full huge teaspoon. And we want two tablespoons of honey. The honey just makes the bread sweeter. We're gonna leave that. We kind of stirred it up a little bit and we're just gonna leave that. Next, we're going to do half a cup of our hot water. To my half a cup, I'm going to add two teaspoons of yeast granules. And then we're gonna add a single teaspoon of honey. The honey is going to help your yeast get activated and make it grow. So we're gonna stir that up pretty good. And then we're gonna let that sit for about 10 minutes and it should puff up to here. Our next step is to Put that active yeast in the other sweet water. <laughs> now we're gonna take three cups of flour 
and put it right in there. Notice it's not particular. We will be adding quite a bit more flour. But to start with, we're just gonna do the three cups, get it all mixed together. And then on our clean table here, we're gonna start kneading it. Okay, let's add a little more flour so we can put it out on the counter. Okay, now we're gonna knead it and keep adding flour until it feels just right. Should be just a little sticky, but not dry. It should be flexible. So knead it for about 10 minutes and we'll be right back. Now the reason you need to knead it for 10 minutes, definite 10 minutes, is because you're activating the yeast throughout all of the dough. It's very important. Your yeast will be much happier and your bread dough will rise better. But it definitely has to be 10 minutes. If you don't do 10 minutes, it's not gonna work out as well. So keep that in mind. Texture is getting a little more uh, rubbery. It's feeling pretty good. Now, early on in my bread making days, <laughs> I tried kneading it for only eight minutes, just two minutes short because my arms were hurting. I was not used to it. And you know what? That bread did not work out. So I learned my lesson. I don't cut back on my minutes. 10 minutes, definite 10 minutes. <laughs> It's worth it, it really is. The bread is so very good. All right, we are just about at our 10 minute mark. You notice it's kinda, it's a little sticky, still very rubbery and pliable. And when it gets too sticky, I just add just a, a little bit of flour. I don't want too much, cause I don't want it dried out. Okay, and that is our 10 minutes. So I'm gonna take my bowl here. I'm gonna put my dough directly in there. And I wanna use a little avocado oil. You can use water, that works also. If you've got liquid butter, you can put that on there. I like to keep it just a little bit moist. See, it's not a lot, it's just a little bit. I think I put maybe a quarter size in my hand. There we go. And that's what it's gonna look like. We're gonna put our cloth on top. And one thing I didn't do yet, put it all the way to warm, turn it on bake. My kitchen is cold, so my dough is not gonna rise very well. So this is my one and only cheat, so to speak. <laughs> I'm turning the warm oven on just for a couple, maybe a minute, a whole minute maybe. I don't want it really warm because then it won't rise comfortably. I want it to go slowly, not instantly. And then we're gonna let it sit until it doubles in size, which is usually about two hours. So let's check our oven now because I think it should be about ready. Yep, good enough. Let me turn that off and put this in there. And we'll check it in about two hours. Several years back, when we first started this channel, we were living in New York State in this old Second Empire house. And we needed some laundry equipment. And so we bought these two from a local commercial laundry dealer. 
They've been great machines. They have given us zero trouble ever since then. And how many years have we had these things now? Um, it's been a long time. And so now that we're having some trouble with drying, it's time to do a little bit of preventative snooping and see if we can figure out why. So this dryer right here is a gas powered dryer. And if you remember when we moved in, the first thing we had to do was hook up power and water and gas so that we could power these two machines. So this is the dryer in question. The first thing I'm gonna do, of course, is open it up. And I wanna check the screen because the screen is the first thing to look for when you're not drying properly. And of course, Jeannie does a marvelous job of keeping it clean, so I didn't expect to find anything there and I wasn't disappointed. So even though this is clean, I still wanna take it apart and have a look underneath it because sometimes things get through. So I'm going to take this screw off of here. This particular dryer has a permanent one. And by permanent, I mean just screwed on. It's not really permanent. I thought for sure this fastener would be metric, but a good old American laundry machine always has proper fasteners. And there it is. You can see the outside of it, or the underside rather. There's quite a bit of dust here and a lot of lint down here as well. Welcome back to the kitchen. It's been about two hours. I freshly washed my hands. Now I've got my bread pan. Now there are all kinds of bread pans you can use. I've used glass and I've used these kind. I like these better than the glass, but I love the cast iron better. I don't have one of those though. So we're gonna stick with this one for now. I'm going to butter it up again. Our dough is ready to be pulled out. But let's butter this up first. Butter it really good and make sure you go all the way to the top edges also. You don't want your bread sticking just on the outside. Look at that, doesn't that look good? I'm turning the oven back on warm for just a moment. And then I'm turning it back off. All right, that looks so beautiful. Squish it down. And I'm going to pull it out of here so you can see it. And what I wanna do is I wanna make sure when I'm rolling it that there are no big air bubbles. You don't want air bubbles in your bread. So we're gonna roll it all up. Bunch it up together. There we go. We're gonna put it in our pan. Kind of flatten it out a little bit. That's what it looks like. We're gonna put our towel back over it and put it back in the warm oven. And we'll let it get to where it's just about this, about an inch and a half above the bread pan. And that is when we can turn on the oven and start baking. So it'll take probably half an hour. So we'll see you back in a few minutes. Here we are at the back side of the dryer. And this is the dryer vent. I'm sure you all know what this is. Now this dryer vent is long. It goes all the way down the laundry room across the other side and then finally goes outside through a vent. And we're definitely going to check that. But before we go there, I'd like to take this thing off and just take a peek inside. That just comes off. Now let me look inside there with a flashlight and see what's going on. Down inside here is theoretically clean, so I'm going to turn it on now and see what happens. Yeah, there's tons of airflow right here, so that part's good. So rather than trying to pull this all out, I'm gonna go ahead and put it back together 
and then I'll go outside and test it again. And if there's a lot of airflow coming out, then we know it's good to go. I went outside and tested it, and there's tons of airflow now, so we should be good to go for the next laundry. I look forward to the next load of laundry. It should run much smoother, and the laundry shouldn't take quite as long. <laughs> now, we've got to tend to the bread. Let's take it back out of the oven and get our oven warmed up. Oh, that looks beautiful. Warm up our oven to 425. We'll preheat it, and once that is reached oven temperature, we'll bake it for about 20 minutes. And our oven is up to temperature, so we'll put our bread in, and then we'll set our timer for 20 minutes. At that time, we'll check it, and make sure it's done. While the bread is baking, let's step into the woodworking shop and take a look at some stuff. This jig is going to allow me to do box joints, and it's far from being done, and there's some extra parts and pieces that have to go on this. But the idea being is that this board here has these oak rails, and it's supposed to be able to slide like this, back and forth. The problem is, when I get up to here, it binds. And so I was looking at this thing, trying to figure out what's wrong. So take a closer look here. Right away, we can see what part of the problem is. Right here, there's a gap, and this gap becomes less and less until it reaches the edges. And so what that means is that our board actually has a curve to it like this. Well, we don't want that. What we want is the board to be just barely off the metal deck, or maybe just barely touching it, and then these rails sit down here in the grooves so we can slide the whole assembly back and forth. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to fix this, so I'm going to have to build a whole new one. There it is, folks, our beautiful bread. It really is that easy. I don't think I did a good job of explaining what this is, so let me do that real quick. In woodworking, there's something that's known as a box joint. So you have a piece of wood here and a piece of wood here and they go together with fingers like this in the corner and it makes a really nice finished look. Now, they don't stick out obviously, but, but they interleave like this. And so the way we do this is we build this sled. That sled has two rails which run on the table saw and then it has a box like structure like this and then there's some extra pieces in there that allow us to index the piece that we're cutting. So what we'll be doing is holding this on here like that and then running it through the saw blade and it cuts a little mouse hole right there. And then we'll be able to index it and cut all the mouse holes perfectly and you'll see how that works later. But the problem is today that this one is no good. This is basically firewood now and I have to rebuild it. So I went to the home store and got a new piece of project plywood here, which is nice and flat. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut it in half. That takes care of the base plate. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut two side pieces. Now that we have all of our pieces cut, I'm gonna go ahead and start gluing things together. So I just have regular old plain old wood glue. And let's just drop a bead of glue across here like that. If anybody's wondering, this is a piece of MDF, medium density fiberboard. Uh, we never use this stuff in historic preservation, but I'm simply making a tool for the wood shop here. So I'll go ahead and put that on there like that and get it pretty much where it needs to be. Yeah, let's put a good squeeze on there and I think that's okay. 
All right, I think we can go ahead and take these off now. These are my end pieces. I'll go ahead and glue up one edge, on the short side. And I'll glue up one long edge as well. We have the beginnings of a table saw sled right here, half of a box, and I have my two rails. Now, what I need to do is make sure that these rails will run smoothly all the way back and forth, and they seem to be doing that just fine. So I'll go ahead and set them like that. So these two rails are ever so slightly higher than the deck itself. And so this will sit down on those two rails and should glue up nicely. Let's see if it runs properly. I should be able to pull it all the way back without it binding up. And everything looks pretty good. And now we're gonna walk away from this thing and let the glue set up. Well, we have some good news and some bad news. The good news is the sled works perfectly. The bad news is I was getting ready to change the blade on this saw and I discovered that the hole inside of this thing is choked full of sawdust. Now our dust collector is just off camera here, but it has three times as much power as is needed to run the dust collection on this saw. There's a tremendous airflow, but for some reason it's not working on the saw. And I think that the problem is there's a collection hose down inside there that's too small and it's actually too long. So it has all these loop-de-loop -loop bends in it. Somebody at the manufacturer, I guess, didn't want to cut the pipe down to the correct length. So we'll correct that and see if we can't improve the performance of this thing. Well, I think that's enough for this episode. We'll work on this thing offline and come back and we'll see you another time. But we also did some other things that were fun, right? I loved baking, yes. Yeah, that <laughs> bread was so good. We had some with dinner with butter on it, nice Ooh. and hot. Oh yeah, you guys need to try that. If you've never tried making bread, it only takes a little while and a little bit of effort with your hands and <laughs> the results are incredible. Everybody will love you for it. Oh yes, it tastes so much better. Thank you for watching 1834 Restoration House.